Hello everyone, my name is Fu Kang Liu. The title of this talk is Cube-Based Crypto Analysis of Subterrain SAE. This is a joint work with Takano Isobe and Vidimir. As we know, NIST now is holding a lightweight cryptography competition, and there are 32 candidates selected for the second round. Therefore, it is necessary to understand the security of these candidates. Our target is Subterrain SAE, it is the AEAD scheme based on Subterrain 2. Subterrain 2 is designed by John Dalman et al. All the three designers are listed here. Our analytical results are summarized in this table. As can be seen from it, in the non symmetric setting, we can break Subterrain SAE in practical time. In the non respecting setting, when the number of blank runs is reduced from 8 to 4, we can achieve a faster key recovery attack and a practical distinguishing attack. So what Subterrain SAE is? The input of Subterrain SAE is composed of four parts, a 128-bit key, a 128-bit nonce, the associated data, the message, the output is composed of the cipher test and a 128-bit tag. The overall structure of subtree SAE uh, can be illustrated in this figure. It can be divided into seven steps. At step one, the key will be absorbed. At step two, the nonce will be absorbed. Then it follows eight blank runs. At step four, the associated data will be absorbed, and at step five, the message will be encrypted. Then again, it follows eight blank runs. Finally, the 128-bit tag will be generated. So as can be seen from this figure, when processing each 32-bit block, only one round of permutation R is applied which is very different from many sponge-based constructions. So what R is? The one-round permutation R works on a state of size 257 bits. It composed of four operations, chi, iota, theta, and pi. The chi operation is the only nonlinear operation, and it is the same with that used in the Kachak round function. The iota operation is the constant addition operation. The theta operation is used to diffuse the state bits, and the pi operation is used to reorder the state bits. Different from many sponge-based constructions, when injecting the, uh, when injecting the input into the state, the injected positions are not consecutive. For example, the first bit of the input is injected at the position 1, and the second bit of the input is injected at the position 120, 176. Similarly, when extracting the state bits from the whole state, the extracted part is not a consecutive part of the state. Instead, each output bit is the sum of two state bits. Therefore, 64 state bits will be involved in the calculation of 32 output bits. And this and these sixty four out and these sixty four state bits are not located in consecutive positions. Our attack scenarios can be divided into two types. The first is in the non misuse setting. This is because the designers wrote in the document that it may require a non-trivial effort to recover the secret state in the non misuse setting. The second attack scenery is, the, is in the non-respecting setting. 
by reducing the number of blank runs. The reason is that the blank runs in Subterrain SAE are used to separate the controllable input and output, and the designers choose eight blank runs. Before introducing our attacks, uh, let us recall some simple properties of the quadratic function. If xi plus 1 equals 1 or xi plus 2 equals 0, then yi will be linear in xi. If xi plus 2 equals 1, then yi will be linear in xi and xi plus 1. If xi plus 1 equals 0, yi will be linear in xi and xi plus 2. In summary, if any of xi x plus i plus 1, xi plus 2 is set as a variable, we have the following simple operations. First, if xi is set as a variable, yi must be linear in this variable. If xi is set as a variable, yi must be linear in it only if xi plus 2 equals 1. Otherwise, xi is a constant. Third, if x2, xi plus 2 is set as a variable, yi must be linear in it only if xi plus 1 is 0. Otherwise, yi is constant. So now let me introduce how to break subtrain SAE in a non smooth setting based on the above simple properties of the quadratic functions. The non smooth setting is that the same nonce and key can be used to encrypt different messages. The main idea of our attack is to choose a difference in the message blocks and trace its propagation. Then recover the secret state bits from the observed propagation in a cipher test. We will propose four types of conditional cube testers. For the type 1 conditional cube tester, we will recover some state bits next to the injected positions. Specifically, we can choose two variables, v0 and v1. v0 is selected at s0, and v1 is selected at s1. If a specified bit condition on s0 does not hold, after one round permutation for v0, it will be next to v1. And therefore, after one more round permutation, the quadratic term v0, v1 will appear in a certain bit of the, in a certain output bit. However, if the specified condition holds, the propagation is prevented, and the quadratic term will not appear in any output bits. This is a concrete example of the type 1 conditional cube tester. We can choose a cube variable v0 at s04. If the propagation 2 holds, after one round of permutation, uh, the position 21 will contain the variable v0. Therefore, if we choose a variable v1 at s122, after one more round permutation, the quadratic term v0 v1 will appear at a output at an output bit. So these are the parameters for the type one conditional cube tester. For the type two conditional cube tester, we again uh, recover some state bits next to the injected positions. So different from the type 1 conditional cube tester, uh, we choose two variables in S1. Similarly, if the bit condition on S0 does not hold, after one round of permutation for V0, it will, uh, it will be next to V1. And after one more round of permutation, V0, V1, uh, Will appear. So the quadratic term v0, v1 will appear. After one more round permutation, the cubic term v0, v1, v2 will appear at a certain output bit. However, if the specified condition holds on S0, the propagation is prevented from the very first beginning. So the cubic term will not appear 
at any output bits. So we can directly recover one state bit based on the cube sum of the three. We only use two parameters for the type two conditional cube tester. For the type three conditional cube tester, we again use it to recover more uh, state bits next to the injected positions. However, different from the type one and type two conditional cube testers, the cube variables are set at S0, S2, rather than S0, S1. Again, if a specified condition on S0 does not hold, after two round permutation for V0, it will be next to V1. Then after one more round permutation, the quantity term V0, V1 will appear in a certain output bit of V3. However, if the specified condition hold on S0, the propagation will be prevented at the very first beginning and the quartic term will not appear. So, according to the cube sum of D3, we can directly recover some uh, secret bits, secret state bits of S0. A concrete example of the type C conditional cube tester is illustrated here. Specifically, when the propagation C holds, after one round permutation for V0, the C positions 107, 171, 192 will contain the variables V0. Then after one more round permutation, it must, uh, it will must propagate to the positions next to 15 and uh, 17. So if we choose a variable v1 at s215, after one more round of permutation, if the propagation 3 holds, there must be a quartic term in certain output bits. However, if the propagation 3 does not hold, the quartic term will never appear in any output bits. So we can recover some. Uh, uh, so we can also recover some state bits using the type three conditional cube tester, and these are the parameters. According to the previous three types of conditional cube testers, we can only recover the state bits next to the injected positions. However, there are only thirty two. Uh, injected positions. In other words, we can recover at most 64 state bits. It is too small to recover the whole state in practical time. So we need to come up with a new type of conditional cube tester to recover the state bits not next to the injected positions. This is our type 4 conditional cube tester. Different from the previous three types of conditional cube testers, uh, we will recover the state bits in S1 rather than in S0. And similar to the type 3 conditional cube testers, uh, the variables are selected at V0 and the, the variables are selected at S0 and S2. If a specified condition on S1 does not hold, after two round permutation for V0, it will be next to V1. And therefore, after one more round permutation, the quartic term V0 V1 will appear in a certain output bit. However, if the specified condition on S1 does not hold, after, after two round permutation for V0, it will be never next to V1. So the quartic term will never appear in any output bits. So based on the cube sum of V3, we can directly recover some secret uh, state bits of S1. So these are the parameters for the type 4 conditional cube tester. Obviously, we can recover much more uh, state bits 
using the type 4 conditional cube tester. So now let me describe how to recover the whole state using our four types of conditional cube testers. So first we send an encryption query and obtain the corresponding ciphertext and the tag. The goal is to recover the secret state MS1, MS2, and MS3. So as the first step, we can treat MS0, MS1, MS2 as S0, S1, S2 respectively. Then we can recover 43 secret bits of MS1 using the type 4 conditional cube tester. At step 4, uh, we treat MS1, MS2, MS3 as S0, S1, S2 respectively. And the first message block is kept the same with that in the very first query. Then we use the four types of conditional cube testers to recover 53 extra secret bits of, F of MS1 and 43 secret bits of MS2. Repeating the similar idea for two more steps, we can recover 111 secret bits of MS1, MS2, MS3. And according to the cipher test, we can also know 16 linear equations of MS1, MS2, MS3, respectively. So how to recover the remaining unknown state bits? Our method is to use an algebraic method. We can trace the 146 unknown state bits in MS1 as variables. Then, according to the cipher test, we can know 16 leaked linear Boolean equations in these variables. And according to MS2, we can, we can construct 127 leaked quadratic Boolean equations in these variables. And by carefully investigating the relations between MS3 and MS2, we can also construct 51 leaked quadratic Boolean equations in these variables. So in total, we have a number of 194 equations in terms of the one 146 variables. By guessing 16 variables, there will be 130 variables and a total number of 54 possible quadratic terms. Therefore, we can solve such a quadratic Boolean equation system with time complexity 2 to the 16, which is very practical. After the whole state is recovered, we can reverse the whole uh, encryption phase. In this way, with a similar algebraic method, we can recover the secret key with time complexity 2 to the 35. Now let us move to the attacks in the nonce misuse setting. For the key recover attack, our main idea is to use the degree of freedom of the nouns. Then we try to uh, construct a similar conditional cube testers to recover some state bits of ns one in. In this way, then we construct a quartic Boolean increasing systems of the secret key bits and solve such a quartic Boolean increasing system uh, with the guess and determine and linearization techniques. Uh, specifically, we will choose uh, 65, uh, 65 cube, cube variables. If a specified condition holds, then the cube sum for the first cipher block, for the first cipher text block, must be zero. However, if the condition does not hold, the cube sum of the first cipher test block will never be zero. In this way, we can recover 22 secret state bits of NS0OT. Then we can recover the whole state bit, the, 
then we can recover the whole key with time complexity 2 to the 122. For the distinguishing attack in the non-respecting setting, we can carefully choose four cube variables in N2 and 29 cube variables in N3. In this way, we can know that the cube sum for the first cipher test block must be zero. So in summary, we can break subterrain SAE in the non usage setting with practical time complexity. In a non-respecting setting, when the number of blank runs is reduced from 8 to 4, we can achieve a faster key recovery attack and a practical distinguishing attack with time complexity 2 to the 33. That's all. Thank you.